Tributes have been uh, pouring in, but also I think people have been just assessing the scale of Charles Kennedy's achievements in leading his party to its best ever election result, and perhaps more importantly, in putting his party at the forefront of uh, opposition to the Iraq war. And also a man who, to some extent, was ahead of his time in adopting a more open, uh, less formal approach, perhaps, to politics, but a man who maybe struggled somewhat when he was made leader of his party. Well, another former Liberal Democrat leader, David Steele, joins me uh, now. What do you think stands out about Charles Kennedy's career? Well, I think the fact that he got the largest number of MPs of any of us as, as party leader is, is his lasting achievement, I think. He was a man of very strong convictions. Uh, you mentioned the Iraq war. That, of course, propelled him very much to the forefront of uh, British political debate. But he had strong views also on Europe. He, he will be greatly missed in the upcoming referendum. He would have been a, a key figure there. Um, and he was, I think, the only one of the MPs who was against the coalition. Um, on which I didn't agree with him, but, but uh, that was his, his view. I last, of course, I've, I miss him as a very dear friend. I, I last had supper with him just in the, in the dying days of the old parliament in the canteen in the, in the Commons. Um, and I'd been with him on Sky, I'd been at his Croft and Fort William. He was a, a, a great fun to be with. Did he still enjoy politics? Because we know he had his drink problems, he'd had some personal setbacks. Was he still as enthusiastic about politics. Yes, he was. And he also did two terms, which is unusual, as rector of Glasgow University, where he was still very popular there. And uh, he, he, he was very much identified with the highlands of Scotland. That, that was his base. Um, and he was enjoying it. And he was looking forward to the election. I don't think he was expecting to lose his seat uh, from the conversation that I had with him, but that's politics. I mentioned his time as leadership. I mean, how far do you think was he equipped to be leader of the party? I think he was always equipped to be leader of the party. Uh, as a matter of fact, I gave him a prize when he was a student uh, at an inter-university debating competition. That's when I first met him. And um, sitting with him at dinner afterwards, I remember saying to him, he was in the Labour Club at, at the university, and I said, I think you should rethink your political allegiance. And, and he then uh, joined with the new SDP when it was formed got the nomination in, in the Highlands, so there was practically no SDP there, it was the Liberals who, who ran him. And therefore he was the first of the SDP MPs to, to cross over to the, to the Liberals and was very, very keen on the alliance and then the merger of the two parties. So he, he was, from the very beginning, uh, cut out, I think, to be a, a leading figure in, in, in the stream of Liberal politics. Much has been made already of the fact that he sort of brokered a new style of politics, a much less formal style of politics. And in a way, I wonder if he was actually ahead of his time there, given that nowadays politicians all desperately crave to, to reach out, to empathise with voters. Yeah, but he was a natural. He wasn't, he wasn't surrounded by um, spin doctors and, um, you know, he wasn't surrounded by an entourage. He was very much um, his own man. And I think that came across to the public. They, they liked his approach. They liked him appearing on these chat shows. He was, he was known scoffingly in the Commons as Chat Show Charlie, but that, that was jealousy. That, that was uh, part of his effectiveness, I think, as a, as a human being. Another of his um, deep beliefs was Europe, and he yeah. clearly intended to play a prominent role in the forthcoming referendum campaign. I think we will greatly miss uh, his affability and his eloquence in the upcoming referendum on Europe. He would have been a major figure there. He, he was president of the European movement. He was uh, respected across party for his conviction on that. And I think his com combination of his commitment to Scotland and his commitment to the European ideal uh, was what really carried conviction with the public. Was he disconcerted at all by uh, the rise of Scottish nationalism, the uh, possibility that Scotland might become independent? No, I don't think he was particularly faced by that. Uh, he, he, he was a, a very passionate Scot, and so I think he understood the rise of nationalism. He wasn't expecting to be swept away by it. I know that from the conversation I had with him just before the election. But, you know, that's politics. That happened, and he was just swept away in the tide. 
David Steele, thanks uh, very much uh, for your time. Joanne, as I say, uh, tributes really coming in from all sides, and that, in a way, tells its own story uh, about Charles Kennedy, that despite the sort of the cut and thrust of everyday Westminster politics, I think you would struggle, honestly, to find someone who had a bad word to say about him.